Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World Vlog. <laughs> I gotta get used to saying that you guys. I, I'm more than just one option. I don't have just a YouTube channel. I have other platforms that I, you know, promote myself on, including my website, differenceworld.net. And so this is Difference World Vlog. <laughs> Correction on that, you guys. Don't get it twisted. So welcome to Difference World Vlog, everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And if not, I hope it gets better for you guys and got a manifest plan and prepare for y'all. And so with that being said, jumping right into it for today's vlog, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my podcast interview I did a while back, back in 2021 with the 1130 podcast, my boy Dre, or aka screw, screw, Dre on wheels, uh, holding it down for those that are, you know, in a wheelchair and, and representing it very well for those in the disabled community, if you will. I don't like that word because, you know, they can still do things, you know, people that can walk, but you just got to give them a chance and different options. But he, nonetheless, he is representing and he is holding it down for them. And, and so big ups to my boy Dre. Make sure you guys follow him on YouTube as well. You can go to his channel and you like his videos and subscribe as well. Show him some love. Um, but getting right into it, yeah, I had a very good time talking with him about my new book or my book that's been out for a while. <laughs> oh shit, you guys. Uh, it's been a, a wacky day for me, y'all, but I'm still gonna get it done regardless. But, uh, yeah, as we talked about my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, as well as other things and other topics that was going on at that time. So, uh, uh, me and you both are gonna take a look back in this, uh, interview and just see what it is that we had discussed on and, of course, other issues that, that were put in today's society and talking about that. So, without further ado and getting right into it, you guys, check it out. And once you're done, I'm gonna come back on and hip you guys a little bit to what's going on in Difference World. And, you know, we're gonna go from there. So, here it is. Check it out. Wonderful joining me back here for everyone who's watching on YouTube. Appreciate it so, so much. If you're new to the 1130 Podcast, because there's a lot of new people, man, joining in each and every week to the 1130 Podcast. Make sure you subscribe, smash that subscribe button, like it, leave a comment, and do all that great stuff. And uh, don't forget to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, man, yo, back at it, man. Great guest, great guest coming up this week here on the podcast. Her name is Different. Yes, man. Uh, Different episode each and every week, man. But her, her name is different. She's from Houston, Texas. She's an author. She's a motivational speaker. She's the owner of a business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. She has a new book out, you guys. A new book out, and it's called What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. Yes, man. We're going to chat it up with different, chop it up on, chop it up with her about her awesome new book. Everything, man. That's going to be great, you guys. For real, that's coming up in just a bit. But you guys, I hope you guys are having a blessed, blessed week. I appreciate everyone joining me back here on the podcast, man. For real. Yo, before we get into the show, I want everyone to follow EB Radio on Instagram at EB Radio underscore. For real. But you guys, man, we ain't going to waste no time. We ain't going to waste no time because I got an amazing guest coming up. But you guys, we're going to start this week off with the WTF moment of the week, you guys. Man, this is crazy, man. Yo, um, rock band. A rock band was on stage this past weekend, you guys. And man, oh, man, what went down was crazy, yo. It was a WTF. Rock band lady was like, yo, man, anybody want to come on stage and get a golden shower? Now, I'm, I'm, once I saw this, I'm like, really? Really, no. But, yo. Check this out, WTF. the NBA Finals live on ABC with YouTube TV. Try it free. Google Career Certificates provide online training for in-demand jobs. Train for jobs in 
IT support, project management, data analytics, user experience design, and more. Put your skills to work with a Google Career Certificate. Like WTF though, for real though. Like you gonna pull your pants down on stage though and, and, and urinate in on my face and my like really WTF though. Like that's crazy though. With everything going on in the world right now with coronavirus and, and you know like with people who were just you know the asteroid world concert just went down last weekend. That's what you you know give back to your fans to say yo you know what. You know and then some dude you know he just I, like I, I can't believe this though. Like what what are we doing now? Like, really, what are we doing? And she went on to her social media accounts to apologize to some fans. Like, you, now you apologizing for doing some dumb, crazy shit like that? Like, WTF, though. Like, come on, man. Shit is crazy, guys. <laughs> shit is crazy. Man, for real. But you guys, man, I had an amazing guest that's coming up. Her name is Different. Once again, she's from Houston, Texas. She's an author of our new book called What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift Different is joining me right now here on the podcast. Different. How's it going? So great. Thank you so much for having me. What's up, everybody out there listening and watching? Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T, so you guys know how to spell that. Uh, thank you so much for having me and show. I'm blessed to be here and excited to share with you all, you know, my story, my business, and my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. So, yeah, man, like you said, let's hop right into it. Let me start the podcast. Let's get at it. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Different. Um, thank you for once again, you know, reaching out to me. It's always an honor, as I always say to, you know, guests that uh, reach out to me to be on the podcast, you know, as I'm approaching the two year anniversary of the podcast and just, man, you know, doing my thing consistently. I always uh, see as it as, you know, being grateful and just, you know, humbleness that someone reached out to me to be on the podcast. So it's amazing. Once again, different. You start your name a little different. Uh, can you, did you always have that name different or uh, how, how did you came about? And so I had my little identity crisis break, if you will. But well, I guess something that, you know, we all go through, we have to question ourselves and, you know, ask who am I, what am I, why am I here? And uh, just something I had went through in college and, you know, um, just they might, you know, I came up with, with the, the meaning behind, you know, the word different and the term different for me. A lot of the times when you hear people say, oh, I'm different, oh, I'm not like most people, that's, that's a vanity that just, you know, they're upping themselves, you know, and as it should, everybody should be their own number one fan. But for me, when you, when you hear the word different for me, it means to be different from who you was in your past. You know, a lot of us, we have, you know, skeletons in our closet, you know, shady past, you know, we didn't like the person that we was before. And for me, you know, my background coming up, I, I wasn't the best person, you know, I could be. And so it took me taking a, you know, ugly look at myself and facing the ugly truth about myself into where it forced me to change, you know, that negative side of me and become something different than what I was at that time. So when I say my name is different or I'm different, it's not a vanity, it's a humility to be, you know, different, better than what you was or who you was in the past. Right. So when you, when you, when you said, when I say different about me, it's not, oh, I'm better than this person. Well, I'm not like that girl. I'm different from all the most. No, I'm just like everybody else. I make, you know, fuck ups and, you know, mistakes, but I'm not like who I was in the past. I'm, I'm better now. I'm a okay. Person, different person than what I am. Hey, yo, different. <laughs> I, 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 I dig it. I dig it. You know, this is a podcast. We got to be, you know, open and just, you know, let it all out. So I appreciate that. You know, you got to be different. Let and me take I did my research and I did my homework and I only specifically reached out to podcasts who I knew can handle grown folks talks and was, you know, not going to say, not no, no disrespect to anybody, the you know, other podcasts out there, you know, that's soft and can't handle, you know, grown folks conversation. This is what we about to have, you know, full disclaimer up front. But um, that's why I, you know, I researched you. I looked out and checked out, you know, your podcast and seeing, you know, the conversations that you were having. And it's definitely, you know, inquiring to what, you know, my business, Third Eye Entertainment, is about, you know, bringing social awareness to society, you know, on issues that are taboo and people often sweep under the rug or look the other way. And so I think it's, you know, it's fate I complete that, you know, we linked up and I reached out to you and, you know, you just responded. Like I said, I reached out to you. A lot of people, you know, who were thought were able to handle, you know, these type of conversations and you were one of the few that responded. So... I'm so happy to be grateful for you to doing so. So 
I'm not doing you no favor. You're doing me a favor, and I'm grateful for you to have me, man. Much appreciative. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm appreciative. You, you're doing me a favor by being here on the Thanks. podcast because last week I was just talking to myself. You know, I had a couple of I had a guest uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, I'm just chatting with her. You know, just you know, from, from, talk about it all. Yeah, you know, just you could just go on and just talk about it all. But you know, how long can you do that? And you know, and talk to yourself for you know so long. But yes, you're doing me a favor. Different. I appreciate you being here on the eleven thirty podcast. Um, I also was doing my research. I love your story. You have an amazing, inspiring story. Like you said, we all go through you know stuff and got our backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, but uh, you, 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 you. In your story, you were talking about being homeless and stuff like that and how everything, you know, changed from you around the age of 11. Um, what did you realize the moment that, you know, life was not no longer normal for you? The exact day, um, I came home from school. I was actually a Girl Scout, you would believe. Um, and I came home and I had the permission, so we were going to do like a something trip that I was going to go on with Girl Scouts. And I came home and I told her, told my mom, excuse me, um, you know, sign it, sign it, some, some to a degree. I, you know, I was all, that's all I was worried about. And she was just telling me, you know, we got other things. I ain't going to be, you ain't going to be going. I wasn't understanding it at the time. Me as just, you know, an 11 year old, I'm thinking, you know, why can't I go? She's not telling me, let me know at the time. Well, we're about to, you know, leave this apartment. We're about to basically be homeless and not have a place to stay. Um, and so that's why I wouldn't be able to go to uh, the camping trip, if you will. But from then on, you know, we stayed pillow to post for three years, you know, sleeping in hotels, parks, bus stops, shelters, you know, well, it's just how this many places out there, you know, even the crack house at one point, you name it. And that's just what happened until the time I was around 14. That's when I was seeking a place to foster care by a relative. And at the time that I was placed, I didn't know it. But for the first six months, I tried to come home and um, and then I found out there's another foster care that if you stayed in the state of Texas, if you aged out of foster care or was adopted by a certain age, um, they would pay for your tuition waiver to college. And so right then and there, you know, me being from the streets and, you know, understanding the street life, you know, I just decided to use my books, my street smarts to elevate my book smarts there and just decided to, even, so my family found me. I told them I was going to stay and, you know, do about those four years in foster care so that I would be able to have a way to go to college. And that's just what I did. And by that time, I was 18. I went off to San Houston State University. So shout out to all the bad cats out there. Um, and it was such a blessing in disguise because I ended up getting, um, starting my own student organization titled Pay Board, so, you know, an organization that's tailored to mentoring, educate, and volunteering to kids that are for in foster care as well as you know, the youth in general. That's actually where my motivational speaking uh, seed was started. If you will, I would go to different high schools speaking to kids about the importance of education and just share my story with them. And a lot of them would come to me and tell me, you know, wow, your story touched me. So that's where that seed was planted. I was also blessed with the opportunity to travel abroad. And I got to study in South Korea to at Kenya University. And within that opportunity, um, I got to travel to eight other countries. And so that's where my travel bug was born, if you will. And then here I am fast forwarding to four years where I graduated with my bachelor's in international business and I have two minors in economics and business, business communication. Um, <clears throat> I also have my master's degree in entrepreneurship, um, not to mention I'm a Texas real estate agent and now I'm CEO of my own business and the author of my own book, What is the Controversial Paradigm Shift. Um, I've been all over the world, in just about 50 countries. Love doing MMA, uh, reading, writing, meditating, you know, practicing chakra healing and uh, aromatherapy, and just being in tune with my third eye and just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been through a lot. I love it. I, I really do. The story is really amazing. I gotta stop you for a moment because you know you. you I really gotta ask some questions. I gotta go into it though. You know, like I, I don't wanna. I don't wanna lose my questions or anything like that. But uh, I, I love the story and everything. You know, you talked about how, you know, you, you were in, you've been homeless and stuff like that. And, you know, at the age of 11 and how things, you know, really changed for you and stuff. You've been put in to foster care. You say you were secretly put into foster care. And of course, you know, I, I you know, I didn't know once I was reading the story and I'm like, yo, you know, that's kind of, you know, uh, in a way it's kind of, you know, uh, cool because once you 
you know, age out of the system, you know, your, your fees in college. Former MasterChef contestants are back to win. This season's all about second chances. This is terrible. It's my time to win it. That's award-winning stuff. <laughs> MasterChef Back to Win premieres this Wednesday on Fox. You know, stuff is waived, and it was, you know, gave you a platform and a gateway straight on to college and stuff like that. But once you, you said uh, you were secretly put into, you know, foster care, which were you alone by yourself or, you know, were, were anybody else with you? How, how did you handle that? And as far as like other family members, know it's just me. Um, and, and I had to go through that, you know, dealing with different placements and different kids because I wasn't the only one, and I'm not the only one. In that system, they had that type of problem. So when you get in that system, in that, that situation, be honest and be keeping one, honey, you just get, you become a, a number, you get lost in the system. And, and it's hard. At one point, I was living in a foster home that had 12 girls in there. And this lady, she really wasn't a good foster parent. She was just doing it for the checks. That was just basically her business. And so it's like that in the system sometimes. And so that's why, you know, when, we, when that incident happened, I can't think of the girl, the young lady's name. It just happened. She was shot by the police. Shakira was her name. I can't believe that. I think that's her name. I'm sorry if it's not. But um, I, I completely understand what she was going through and, and what could have happened and what probably went down in that situation. Because I've, I've too been in that type of situation to where I was living with a foster parent and they had other foster kids who they were, you know, their favorites and they would have me, have them gang up on me and I would have to, you know, fight and defend myself coming up. Um, and like I said, I was, I was a Girl Scout, but I, I basically, you know, had to turn into, you know, a, a thug in high heels, if you will. I was a nerd and I still am a nerd, but like I like to tell people, I'm a nerd from the hood. So, you know, if you bully me, I'm a bully back. And mm -hmm. that's what it was for me in time, you know, going up through high school, we all had to deal with bullying, but that's just how I dealt with it. I bullied back, and so I got that reputation boost, not to be fucked with, if you will. But, you know, and, and so everybody just kind of stayed out of my way, and I stayed out of everybody else's way. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, but and also, like I said, I just I got that reputation that, you know, just pushed people off and got that notion of, you know, don't don't mess with her. And so that's how it had to be for me because, you know, couldn't trust nobody. And what their motive was it's a lot of times you know the people that came in in the, my life were there for their own per personal gains and so i learned that at a young age you know you gotta look out for number one but that shouldn't make you a hard person on the inside that shouldn't turn you and and, and to to away from believing that there's good in this world there is evil in this world but there is more good you just got to look at it and see for what it is and and, and know that you have to let you know your goodness shine and overcome your your badness with your good. I hope I'm making some people out there. I know sometimes I can get off topic and ramble, but that's just what it was for me. I couldn't let it turn inward, although it did at some point in my time. Here go my adulthood. I got my shit together. I faced okay. my earth and and fixed my demons, and I still am. I'm not a perfect person. Don't get it twisted. I still have my muck up. I'm, I'm dealing with depression right now as we speak. You know, losing four people this year alone, it, it, it takes a real bad toll on you. So that's why I'm telling anybody out there that's going through any type of mental anguish that to know that you are not alone out there. Anybody feeling suicidal, especially right here and now, please call this number 1-800-273-8255. Or anybody out there need any other resources, go to mentalhealthishealth.org. Check your local, you know, resources and look it up online, do your own homework. But just know that it's okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Whatever you went through as a child, know that it, it was not your fault. It was out of your control. But as an adult, it's your problem to fix because you're the one that's losing sleep at night. You're the one that's tossing and turning and can't move on from the past. Otherwise, that person that hurt you, they moved on to the next victim. They're not worried about you. They don't care. You don't expect for them to come back and, you know, mend that broken bridge to fix it's not their problem to deal with anymore. It's on you. And that's the ugly we all have to face. That's what I have to face. And once I did that, I was able to, you know, release myself from that mental bondage by God's grace. If you will. I wasn't just me. I ain't self made. I'm God made. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, yeah. I need to to battle that demon of, you know, self destruction because had I not, 
you know, recognize my, my self-destruction and took control of that issue and, and work and continue to work on this issue. Like I'm a work in progress. And so it's, it's not done for me. I'm still working constantly. But mm -hmm. um, um, you talked about how you, you know, you, you've been going through a lot of stuff and you dealt with depression and, you know, bullies and stuff like that. And you also, you know, talking about how black people don't go to therapy and, you know, that's the same, you know, black people, you know, they got a problem or something wrong with it. They got to deal with it and stuff like that. So what was, what was, what was the moment that you, you know, got the courage enough to say, you know, what I'm going to therapy to deal with, you know, uh, the stuff that I'm going through as far as depression. Like I said, uh, just, just living in the past, stuck on the past of my mistakes and couldn't get over, you know, what I did and how I, I mucked up my own, you know, blessing. Like I said, I had that interview and I didn't go because I, I, I stopped believing in myself. I let the demons in the back of my head tell me I wasn't good enough for that, you know, meeting or that person, you know, he was, they were just taking pity on me because, you know, my story, my background, and I purposely showed up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in their mouth. And he, he basically, that, that person was a millionaire. They were well connected that I, I could have been basically a millionaire if you knew, if you, if you will, I'm 30 years old now. And this happened when I was around 20, 21. And so I was young to give myself that, but still I, I let my, my demons overtake me. And, and I always said that that what if, you know, what if I would have went to that meeting? What could have happened? Oh man, I could have been got my family up out of the you know the, the situation. And so that right there eating away at me for years. It wasn't just you know days; it was years that this ate at me. And so and it faced me. It, it, it to one day I just woke up and said, you know what? That's my fault because I'm sitting there, you know, letting these demons and my past and you know these negative thoughts that I need to get control over you know, have control over my life. And so that's just what I did. And so that's that's when I said, fuck it, I'm gonna go to therapy. I don't care what nobody say, I don't care nobody think. I don't care who don't like hearing my story, or who tired of hearing it, who don't want to hear it. This is my story and I'm gonna stick to it. So it is what it is. Hey, I really dig it though. I really do. That's an awesome story. You gotta stick to it. You know, you gotta go to therapy. You know, we all need some, you know, uh, help out here. You know, as far as black people, you know, we're afraid to turn to someone and ask for help. You know, we always, you know, got putting that pride in, you know, in front of us, you know, and I'm, a, hey, I've done it before too, but you know, like if you're going through something, you know, uh, talk to someone, call someone and, you know, check someone out though. Um, you mentioned your, go ahead. Even if you don't, even if, you, if you're too proud to talk to somebody about it, cause that's how it was for me for the longest. I didn't want to talk with anybody. I just coming up in an environment of, You've been taught, you know, what goes on is how it stays and how that's also heavy in the black community. We have that we think we have that instilled in us to not express or tell how we feel to the public or what's really going on inside. And so that's also an issue, you know, that that uh, that holds a lot of us in the black community back, you know, from talking about our feelings. So even if that if you're stuck in that situation, find other options. So if you don't want to talk to a therapist or you don't want to waste your time or money talking to somebody putting other people in your business, then find another outlet such as, you know, writing or picking up another hobby. I know one guy who likes to go fishing. And so I definitely, you know, advocate for the black male, you know, for them to find positive outlets and, and how to express themselves mentally and get that mental anguish off them. I know, and, and the black, in the female world, black female, I know we go through a lot of hell and I know with the plan, I'm not a man, but I can tell you, you know, from what I witnessed, you know, with the black male community, just, you know, what they've been through and as I've seen as an adult, you know, I feel for y'all. And so I, I can imagine what you guys are going through mentally, how y'all not able to express yourself and when y'all do, y'all seem as weak. And so I, I say this as a black woman, I don't think it's weak for a black man to express himself when he's down and feeling vulnerable and needs to get some shit off his chest. If there's anything bothering you and upsetting you, be man or female. If it's eating away at you and I, if it's keeping you up and you can't move on and do things you have to do in life and get that shit off your chest, you know, set yourself free because at the end of the day, people are gonna go on with their life, whether you, you know, stuck in bondage or not. The different, you have an amazing book, like, like I was saying earlier in the podcast, that's out right now. What if a controversial, uh, a controversial paradigm shift is available now? Can you tell my listeners about it? Because 
Um, this is this is this is something really uh, informative that uh, I think a lot of my listeners could uh, learn from, and you know, with everything that's you know been going on in the country as far as like the last two years or so, you know, that's you know for injustice and racial stuff like that. But you know, you got the floor. Can you you know let my listeners know about your uh, book? Definitely. So my new book, What If, A Controversial Paradigm Shift, is a book written to inform and encourage constant thoughts of both conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. Through that, excuse me, through graphic book provocative illustration, what it provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African American community within four categorized paradigm shifts, such as historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. Um, before I go any much further, I must say that the book does come with a disclaimer. It is intended for a mature audience only, so if you can't take this type of heat, do not bother coming to this kitchen. Um, again, the way, the reason why, uh, like I said, the the past, um, the death of George Floyd, me wanting to have my voice heard about the situation and, and asking God what, which way can I go about it that's going to hit them where it hurts, but also, you know, invoke, you know, or hope to promote uh, you know, systemic change over time. And so, although I have the illustration set up to be gritty and grimy, that's meant to make people think and share their thoughts about the issue, you know, of seeing a white person being hung up and lynched by a black man or being whipped and beaten by a black man. Um, like I said, I have it categorized in four main paradigms, uh, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. Um, and, and not, not as well as the book wasn't just written to, you know, encourage those for thought provoking conversations. It's also meant to, you know, stimulate those, if those who, who are mature enough to make it to the end to hypothetical paradigm. They would see that I'm not just talking about black and white. I'm talking about others as well, including, you know, Native Americans, you know, Latinos, Asians, and, you know, even, you know, the Hispanics, if you will. Muslims and so it's not just about black and white it's about unity coming together as one and having compassion for one another and mankind as you know we're all going through something man it's been an awesome show here on EB radio and in YouTube man for real the 1130 podcast we got good vibes man each and every Wednesday good vibes all the way but you guys man we're gonna take a quick quick commercial break and on the other side we're gonna continue the show man for real I got my guest different here joining me talking about our amazing book and overcoming you know our amazing odds and like world don't go nowhere you guys you're listening you're watching to the 1130 podcast something to say a story to tell we make it easy to share yours so let's talk regardless of your podcast setup hit record and from there whether your podcast reaches 10 people or 10 million we can help you get heard wherever listeners are and who knows maybe even quit your day job but no matter who hears you it's about connecting and sharing something from your perspective it's about having a voice and using it without anything standing in your way say it all with anchor Yo, what up? This your boy, Ken of Stones, AJ Coffee, We Sent. This your boy, DOE, Good Brother Bowl. And we are the Dirty Hills. You already know, man, you tuning in to 1130 Podcast. Mm -hmm. Not 730, but 1130. Dude, dude, that's my job. Not 730, but 1130. <laughs> yeah. And you have been <laughs> Dirty Hills Approved. <laughs> on EB Radio and YouTube. Appreciate everyone sticking with me throughout the short commercial break. Appreciate it so, so much, man. It's been an awesome show. I have my guests different, man. Yes, it's always a different episode each and every week here on the 1130 Podcast. But yes, my guest different. She's an author, a motivational speaker. Uh, she's here to chat about her new book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift. That's available right now. She's from Houston, Texas. We're going to get back into the show with my guests. Uh, different. What inspires you? Uh... God, uh, my nephew, who, who always asks me every day, are we rich, are we rich yet? So, you know, um, I want him to have the life that I didn't have coming up. And so that motivates me. And then also with my mother, I just want to, you know, give her the best before, you know, 
she wanted she deserved to have it and so that just what motivates as well as me i'm worthy of it as well and so that's what keeps me inspired what keeps me motivated and what keeps me going okay cool 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 that's dope that's dope you gotta have something that keeps you inspired here each and every week i always thought i asked my guests uh what inspires them because you know every each and every day is rough we always wake up you know uh one day we can wake up you know fine another day we can wake up on the wrong side of the bed but it's always something that you gotta hold on to be grateful and something you know uh some gratitude you know, that takes you a long way uh, in life. But you guys, man, we're going to move on here on the 1130 Podcast. It's time for the 1130 Podcast Hot Seat. Uh, different here on the Hot Seat each and every week. I got six questions from my guests, and uh, we're going to roll with it. You, you down? Let's do it. All right, all right, let's get it. All right. How would you want to be remembered? Hmm. As a person, you know, who lives her life fearlessly, unapologetically, Boldly, briefly, um, cautious, if you will, but you know, I'm a Sagittarius. Sometimes I could be reckless, but you know, all in all, I'm a good person. And I try to get back into I want people to remember the good and, and, and don't try to hide the bad about me because it is what it is. Keep it real about me, but take, you know, live what, what, the way I live my life, how you know, I'm not a perfect person, but God still was able to bless me just because I, I always called up and fell on my knees and believed and know that. He was the one to turn to in the time of me, and even when it wasn't. So um, I, I don't try to get religious because I'm not a religious person, but I'm more of a spiritual person. So um, it's a way to be remembered. It's just a person you know who is blessed by God and just an example of a person who can take from the back to the front. And so that, that's just how I would want to be remembered. You know, I'm the <laughs> I dig it. I really do. I really, I really love that. Uh, if you found two thousand dollars on the ground, what would you do with it? Shoot, boy, you don't want to ask me a question on where I'm recording. Somebody else did. If I said a prayer before, asking for God to send me a financial blessing, and it just up and pops up, so you know, hey. <laughs> If I see the profit, of course I'm going to return it. But if I see somebody ain't around, you know, I'm going to do the, the, the natural thing that everybody else would do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you were stranded on a desert island and you could only have one item, what would it be? Uh, it would be selfish to have somebody else with you because, you know, you got to be, you know, mindful how they feel about being stuck on the island with me. But I am a full-time job. Um, <laughs> so I say, uh, um, I have to say between reading and music, like okay. I like music, I will read the material. I'm going to keep my mind occupied. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I probably said, I, when I was thinking of this, I said, maybe we can find some some type of Wi-Fi so I can call somebody so I can get stranded off of this damn desert island or something. Somebody, like you don't want to find or contact nobody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, that's what you know, I'll burn a bunch of trees. Or, oh, yeah, you're right. That's what I would want. I'll take that back. I would want, want some uh, kerosene and a lot of wood. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are some challenges you think the next generation will face? Um, ooh, that's, that's a good one. And I want to think before I speak. So let me think about it first. I want to just blur out something. Um, think on this. It's an issue for me. I'm, I would say this because I, I grew up with the old school. I had a big mama, a DG, and a Madea. And so I'm in between. I was born in 90. So I like to say we the last Mohegan. Uh -huh. so, yeah. And old school and new school. <laughs> but, um, but with these millennials, you got them millennials. No disrespect to y'all millennials out there listening. But a lot of y'all, like what I've noticed, y'all entitled. It's like, it's my right. I got a right. It's my this, that, and that, third. You don't have a right to shit. You got to earn it just like everybody else. And so that's one thing I learned from the old school. Appreciated that. Is that, you know, some of their ways, I will agree, you know, most of could have been better, you know, but a lot of their ways, it kept us on track, you know, with the discipline, especially in the black community. You know, we need that discipline, that structure, you know, to have those solid foundations. And so I applaud the, you know, old school for the ways that they had to do what they had to do. But now, as the new school and as the next generation that comes forth, um, let's be more socially aware of, you know, things that we say to our children, how that can damage them. Mm -hmm. And 
we treat people and, and be mindful of, you know, although words can't kill you per se, they can't have you to a point to where you make you make a person want to end it all. So I definitely understand what it means and why people are being more socially aware of what they say on TV and how a lot of times people are trying to play themselves and being soft and turn this generation soft. No, we're not. It's just, you know, the times that we're living in, there's a lot of people or kids that you know that, you know, go to school and, you know, kill themselves because of what they go through, you know, dealing with bullying or they come back to that school and, you know, kill the other kids that have nothing to do with what's going on. And so it's because of, you know, things that was in the past, you know, how it was that, you know, that affected us. But now we're older or we've grown, if you will, and with this next generation, uh, if they get out the, the self entitlement for those who feel that it's their right and just work for it and keep it going, then I think we'll be just fine. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I like about this old school is that they're becoming more, excuse me, this new school is that they, they are becoming more socially aware and working on the ways of what, how we were in the past. It was a little harsh, it was hard, but you know, we're doing better than it was. But then on the other side of it, I understand why we needed those ways, if you will. I do apologize, man. <laughs> I, I definitely, I definitely agree with what you're, what you're saying on uh, the last point because uh, this generation. One thing about this generation, uh, they are some entrepreneurs. I tell you that, you know, oh, yeah. with a lot of things uh, going on for our social media and stuff, uh, TikTok and stuff, and you know, them cutting the middleman out. So yeah, they got that going on. But you are right; these new generations feel like they are very, very entitled. Um, what motivates you to work hard? I don't want to be broke. <laughs> shit, I don't want to go back to life of a good shit. I see all these other people, how they getting rich quick. Well, not, well, you know how they going viral and they, they just living their life. And I'm thinking, shit, why not me too? I have all these gifts and talents and this education and, and, and it'd be a waste, you know. That's one thing I would hate to do is you know, God for him to bless me with all these gifts and talents and I just let them go to waste and don't share them with the world and I don't use what I got to get what I want, i.e. a good life. And so that's what motivates me, shit, that I want to live that good life just like everybody else. But also it's not, it's more than just about me. Like I said, I want to create that generational wealth for those that's going to be after me, you know, for my children, their children, and with my nephew as well. He's a part of the book too. Um, He's in the uh, book trailer as well as um, he's on the front cover as well in the book. He's the little black boy that's at the table. He's the one asking the question. So if anybody out there asking, you know, why I got it, why is this an adult book but got kids on it? I set it up in rudimentary form because a lot of the time kids see what adults can't see, as well as I have a lot of pictures to keep people who don't like to read a lot of words attention. And I keep the questions short and simple and to the point. So as well as if the questions don't get you, the illustrations will. And so, so again, what drives me to keep going, you know, I got people counting on me and I'm counting on me, you know. <laughs> That's what motivates me to keep going. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's, what's something that you ate regular as a child, but you cringe at it, uh, the thought of eating now? I'm sorry, say that one more. You said something uh, eating as a child? Yeah, what was something that you used to eat regular as a child, but you can't even stand the thought of eating now? Shit, I ain't going to say that because I still got to eat at the time. Well, <laughs> beanie weenies. <laughs> well, okay. Need much longer shoe. I'm so with the Shelly, you know. Started from the bottom. But um, like I said, this is what keeps me humble. If you will, I'm still, you know, going through the same things. Even though I've traveled all over the world and, you know, done good things, my life ain't all grand. You know, I'm still, you know, living a regular life like everybody else. And so to say that, oh, I, I guess coming up, one thing I hated eating was spaghetti, and I still wouldn't eat it. And so when I had these spaghetti, you know, I turned real booty. Yeah, hey, that's what's up. Spaghetti is always on my menu. One, one thing I say uh, when I was thinking of it, uh, eggs, I used to eat eggs when I was little. Now I can't even, you know, my stomach be, you know, always hurting. Though. But one thing, uh, Doritos, they don't make Doritos, nacho cheese Doritos like they used to make them back in the day. So now they, they, they ain't even all that good. They just, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, yo, uh, Deborah, I appreciate you joining me this week here on the D11 Podcast. Uh, thank you for the show. Any questions, any shout outs, anything you would like to say? Tell everyone where they can get your new book back and everything. Yeah, shout out to my mom, my nephew, Pookie, everybody out there who's you know, listening um, and watching me. Don't forget to go buy the book on my website, differentsworld.net. 
Um, check out all my other social media handles, you know, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm on all that good stuff. Um, also, please be advised that the book does come with a disclaimer, so you can't take the type of eating when you don't come to this kitchen. Um, what else? We all have, have other good things. You know, just got to go to my website and look at all the events that I got posted. Uh, thank you so much again, Drake, for having me on the show. I truly appreciate the opportunity. And everybody out there listening, don't forget whatever it is in life that you want. You have to manifest the plan and prepare for it. It will surely come to you. This is well. All right. Hey, no problem. No problem. You heard it here, you guys. Yo, it be Radio in YouTube. Go get the book, you guys, and go follow different. It's different. Uh, world.net. You guys, go to the website. All the links are going to be down in the description below here on YouTube and everything, you guys. Uh, once again, different. Thank you for joining me this week here on the 11 Thank you for having me, King Dre. Have a good one. Thank you so all right, everybody, welcome back. I hope y'all guys enjoy listening to my audio interview with the 1130 podcast. Be sure to check him out. You go to his YouTube channel. The link is in my bio. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel and look at all his episodes. He's really, really a dope podcaster, man. I enjoyed myself, you know, talking with him, chatting it up. As you guys see, we talked about, you know, millennials, you know, and also I just want to say, you guys, no disrespect to the millennials out there. Uh, I don't backtrack on what I say, but I meant what I said, but in any case, what I meant, or should have been more specific about was the millennials who feel entitled, those entitled millennials that that was uh, who are more so, you know, we're talking about in that conversation uh, for those who, who, who heard that conversation that we had. Um, other than that, you know, it was definitely, you know, a, a, a dope ass interview I had and definitely enjoyed myself. So big shout out to Dre, or AKA Dre on wheels, as he liked to uh, say. Uh, so definitely you guys be sure to make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe the video. And you know, what else we got going on in different world? Um, I have my new video, my travel video coming up for my trip to Canada. Uh, my first actual, uh, international trip. Uh, via travel agent when I first started. I told you guys I started off as a travel agent, but it just wasn't working out for me. So I'm going to show you guys that trip I took. Uh, it was about, we were doing like a travel agent for cruises, if you will. And so I'll show you guys all the fun I had on that. And then I just said, bump that. I'm going to go do my thing. Um, so that travel video is coming. I hope you guys enjoy listening or uh, watching uh, my travel video to Jamaica and Kingston. Uh, that was one of the bomb and dope ass trips I've ever took. And, um, if you guys like that video, it's, it's plenty more coming for those. Um, but yeah, that's what we got going on in Difference World. We have um, a couple of more interviews I'm going to be posting. Be on the lookout for that. Make sure you guys head on over to differenceworld.net and get a copy of my book. Dun, 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 dun. What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. As you guys know, it's a book that's written to encourage and, and promote thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And it's done through graphic and uh, provocative illustrations. And so it's for grown folks only or a mature audience only. You know, for those who understand, you know, the gist I'm, I'm trying to make with this book, or those who even don't, I, I don't give a damn. You know, anybody can read it, you know. Um, it's just the point of, you know, having that conversation and, and, and that needs to be had. And so definitely head over and over to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy. It's available now. I appreciate everybody that's already copped theirs and showing me love, leaving me reviews, and telling others about it. I truly, truly appreciate it. And so what y'all waiting on? Go ahead and over and get y'all copy now. So, <laughs> and what else we got y'all going on in Difference World? Um... Uh, let's see. Nothing, y'all. Just let's make this about y'all. Also, like I said, it's not just me interacting with you guys. I want y'all to interact with me. So, you know, please continue to hit those comments and, and share your thoughts and your opinions and, you know, the travel videos you guys want to see me post. Um, you name it. I've probably been there. I'm not yet, but on the way. So just, just let me know, you guys. I want to, you know, you guys to be interacting with me just like I share my world with you guys. I want y'all to share y'all world with me. And so with that being said, I hope you guys are also keeping your mental health in check and you guys are doing what you have to do to take back your power. You guys are locking that mental box to do what you have to do to free yourself. I also want to take this time to just put it out there for those who are, you know, going through or feeling, you know, suicidal or anybody, if you know somebody of that matter, please give them this number, 1-800-877-8255. Um, that's again, one eight, excuse me, one eight hundred eight seven seven eight two five five. I'm sorry, it may not be right. I gotta, I'm gonna put that down here in the link in the bio. Um, just always just try to say it off the back, but that's the number to call. 
Um, if you know anybody that's feeling, you know, suicidal or need somebody to talk to, man, just know it's okay to not be okay. But don't sit there and not be okay, man. Go get help. Go find somebody to talk to at the bottom, man. Because at the end of the day, it's on you to get yourself in check. You can't wait on nobody else or expect anybody else to come and rescue you. You are going to have to be your own savior at some point in time in your life. You just got to take control of the reins in your life and take back your power and say, Hey, I'm the one that's in the control. I'm the captain of this ship. And once you do that, whatever it is in life that you're feeling that you're destined for, you can manifest, plan, and prepare for you guys. And it will surely, surely, surely come to you. won't come to you right away. It may, <laughs> and it won't come overnight. But over time, with patience and persistency, it will come to you. Different well. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if, in 1619, Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.